Oh, fire, how I've missed you. Okay, we're gonna jump straight into it because some idiot didn't do his job and charge his camera and uh, the clock is ticking. So last week I did did kind of this this thing and cut that and you were there, right? You can always go back and watch the video if you weren't there. What you didn't see is I, I tested out the burner a bit to, to kind of engineer that and then I enlarged that hole. Remember I made that one, I cut that out, made a bigger round hole and then I just left that one. Well, it turns out it wasn't big enough. So I cut it bigger, kind of like that one with the grinder over here. And then I, I, I embiggened it a bit more in a square shape this time. And usually in a kiln you have in like the normal electric ones, like over there. Sorry, I'm gonna stop moving the camera quickly, don't worry. I'm gonna wait till a couple more people throw up though. Uh, they, they have these tiny holes and they have these plugs and that's, that obviously won't, isn't gonna do much. So this is the exhaust and I'm gonna tune somewhat how much air and fuel go in here based on the exhaust back pressure. And if I want to reduce the flow a little bit, I can always just put something in the way, right? That's a it's kiln furniture. That reduces the opening by like a quarter. And then if I need to reduce it some more, you know, that's a little more than a half. And uh, I have another, where did I put that? Here, embarrassingly long time later. Uh, I, I also have this, this is an off cut from when I built something else. I forget, I've made a lot of stuff with these bricks. Uh, I can even like, slide that in there and it's mostly shut and then kind of fine tune it till pretty much completely shut. And completely shut is really only something that you would need to do if you were doing like a full like slow cool down kind of thing. And uh, I just, I'm just gonna heat the thing up and pull the stuff out the top, you know, like usual. So that's that. I also threw in here a couple of things in the way of the flame. So this has a weird taper on it. Hopefully maybe it'll act like a vortex generator or something. It's just, it's just crap in the way to uh, turbulentify the uh, burner, the fire dealy. So don't, don't know if that's gonna do any good, but it'll certainly be a great test of those little bricks. Those are made out of these, those, these 2800 degree ones, not the 23 or 24, whatever these extra crusty light ones are. Yeah, and I can definitely tell this thing is gonna get a coating of Satanite at some point, because these bricks, if you look around like there's, look at that, these are a bit extra crumbly. So they're gonna need a little more stability, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. All right, onto the burner that I came up with. Whoops. So these are, these are just kind of the parts that I'm gonna use, uh, with the exception of this thing. So you'll recognize this. This is a, a regulator. I think it's a turkey fryer one. It's infinitely adjustable, zero to 30 PSI. That goes on to your standard propane grill tank and it comes connected to this very, very long stainless hose because you don't want your, your, your fuel next to the burning stuff. And on the other end, I'll zoom in here. On the other end, this is a 3 8 inch uh, flare fitting. This is a half inch pipe thread fitting attached to a gas valve. In between, I have a, an adapter. I, I think I put this, this whole thing together in some other video somewhere. Got the adapter at the hardware store. This is a gas valve. It's meant, it's a, a valve specifically meant for flammable gases with the exception of oxygen, no oxygen. Last time I talked about this valve, people explained why and something about Teflon in there or whatever and oxygen and pure oxygen coming in contact with a lot of stuff uh, creates like fire and mayhem and people burning to death and we don't want any of that. So that then out here we have, this is a 3 8 inch, no, no, scratch that, half inch pipe thread, just black, black pipe, you know, like you get at the hardware store, there's just a whole aisle of this stuff. And this is a half inch uh, cap into which I have drilled, focus, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a hole drilled in there a very specific sized hole, which I cannot remember what size it is. And it's drilled perfectly straight through with the help of a drill press. And that's attached, and I use this, um, I don't use the Teflon tape. There's another thing you can get called uh, the, the pipe thread stick. I've never had good luck with the, with the, with the tape. I've always had better luck with this kind of, this, this, it's like a stick. I, I don't like the squeezy tube thing either. Uh, with, with this, it doesn't really matter because you're not gonna get a minuscule leak here leaking out a significant amount of gas and there's a giant freaking hole drilled in the end of this. So that's where the, the stuff comes from, where the gas is gonna come from. To explain the rest of this later here, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna draw a little diagram. It's art, art time. You guys remember art class, right? I took way too many of them. And as you'll see from my sketching, 
Uh, my teachers probably should have motivated me to try something else with my life. So here we have the gas. So the gas is gonna come in here. There's a hole in the end of this of whatever size, and I can change how much gas comes through here by the regulator changing the pressure of the gas inside. So the hole's the same. I can't change the hole, especially not on the fly, right? But higher pressure back here with the same pressure out here is gonna make more gas come through this hole. So basically the gas is gonna come through faster, and that's gonna come through perfectly straight because I drilled that hole straight, straight and square with the edge. And that thread, that, that cap is actually really thick. So it's not just, don't think of like a hole in a sheet of paper. Think of like a long tube kind of thing, or not too long, but it's, it's got like almost a quarter inch there at the end. It works, trust me, I've, I've tested it. Then I got this. We got, uh, this is another half inch pipe. This is half inch uh, to three eighth or three quarter flare. This is a half to I think one inch flare because the hardware store ran out of these. This is galvanized also because they didn't have any of these in black pipe either. I think this is like two inches. It's pretty small. Uh, and, and this is gonna act like a flare. So I'm actually gonna put it so that, see which way was it? I think it was like this. So the, the, shoot, the thing blows into the bigger one. That creates what's called a venturi. You got the stream, it's coming in. You got this kind of neck down thing. And then it's got a flare at the end. This gas is gonna be coming through at very high speed. You got high speed gas, that's going to suck air in like this, around. I know a lot of you probably know this from my previous video with the other, the other burner and stuff. This is like a Venturi. So it's kind of like, kind of like a carburetor on a car, right? With that, you would have this, this kind of little horn shaped thing. And instead of high pressure here blowing through to ambient, there was actually low pressure here because your engine's sucking in air. So it doesn't matter that it's high pressure here, or low pressure here. The main thing is the difference. There's a difference from one side to the other causing something to move, right? So as, as the gas gets sucked through in the, uh, the case of the engine, or in this case, blasted through, it accelerates because we're, we're taking in, we're bringing it extra and we're making it shrink down. When it does that, I think it's called Bernoulli's principle. The thing has to accelerate really fast, which kind of, you know, that's, that's actually the thing that causes the low pressure here and sucks in the air. In a carburetor, then you feed in the fuel here. I'm not doing that, I'm feeding the fuel here. Slightly different, but same kind of deal. That fuel and air mixture gets accelerated, and when it hits this part of the flare, see it opens up, you're going a set speed here, it opens up, that makes it slow down. So there's a sudden slowdown right here as the gas, the, the gas goes quickly, it expands, slows down, and starts burning here. So this is where the fire part is. And then that's going to shoot fire out here. That's not all though, because this opening is only this big, and the opening in the, in the furnace kiln dealy is bigger. So we got another opening like this. I don't know how much it affects uh, the airflow here, but I think this blown in here will also suck in more air here, I think. Now this isn't shaped very efficiently for a Venturi, but it might work, it probably works. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not all that concerned, but it means that if this mixture going through this tube here is a little bit on the rich side, there's a little too much fuel for air, it'll actually get more air to burn here. And it's, it's not just sucking into here because on the inside, it's gonna open up again. You know, it's gonna go from this small opening, which I now realize is out of, out of camera. It's gonna go through this small opening and suddenly grow. It's, no, it's not gonna go so much up, but it's gonna flare, it's gonna flare out sideways very much so. And that's gonna cause the same thing. It's gonna slow the, the stream of air down, uh, make it expand, cause perhaps more mixing and burning. And the reason I stuck those other little bricks in there is to kind of make this flow a bit more turbulent and hopefully mix it up and burn it a little better too. Uh, but then there's going to be that that whole area underneath it for it to for it to burn the fuel before you get uh, you get any of the flames like wrapping around and touching the thing. So that's the idea. Now to line all this up is where these extra bar things come in. This is just going to be a bar on the bottom. I got a short one here. I think I think this is about an inch. That's going to go under here to hold that in place. This one I think this is two inches. If we have the two parts here. You know, we got this narrow spot in the middle. This fits between, oops, no wait. This goes on the burner thing. The one inch thing goes between that. 
You see, and this is the same thickness as these two, which means the top of these two are level with each other. That's good because this is a half inch uh, black pipe. The other thing that goes on the end of the, where I drilled the hole, that's a half inch black pipe. If they're both held up the same distance away from the same pole, they line up. How am I gonna attach that, you think? With these extra not sketchy looking clamps. Trust me, it'll be fine. I've been doing this with the, with the other burner and uh, the clamps were never a problem. The, sli the sliding like paper thin aluminum damper sleeve, also not a problem, even though it's supposed to be temporary. The duct tape though, that, that had to be replaced with new duct tape at least three times so far. So this doesn't have any duct tape. It's practically a professional setup. Now one, one interesting thing about this, I can tune how much of this air is going in based on how close I, I line this up with this. And I actually got, I think I measured, I got uh, a nice looking flame coming out the end. If this gap here was an inch and a half, which I thought was insanely big, but it works, whatever. And then I can further tune it perhaps by moving this flare in and out of that hole. I, I didn't notice any major difference there. So maybe that's not as big of a deal, but just in case it's a possibility. Get that distracting thing out the way. You know what's funny? To this day, I get comments about my, my foundry furnace burner on that old video about how the design is flawed and, and it's never gonna work and I should just buy a, a weed burner or something or build this other design that this person knows where to find and of course they send me a link. Well, you know what? I can't figure out any way, any reasonable way that you should build this instead of buying a weed burner. Like. Obviously that's a better idea, but as far as that other burner working, it works fine. Like you know how many people, you know how many places I read that you can't use propane to melt cast iron? That was clearly wrong. It worked fine in my setup and I built the whole thing from garbage basically. Except for these bricks. These bricks were not garbage. They certainly cost more than normal garbage. And you know that's not to say that burner is perfect, but you know what it's great at? Running at full blast. It really can't do anything but full blast. So that's what I do. Let me measure one inch. I need to pull that back a bit. And before you go thinking I, I built all this, tuned it, and then just tore it apart so I could build it again on camera. Kinda, but not quite. I built it way more rickety than this the first time through. Like this one uses all metal. This is probably by far the coolest one I've ever made. So then I'm gonna look down the end. I'm not gonna film this part, but I'm just gonna align the hole. Get that, so it's, yeah, it's mostly right. And I know what you're thinking, that's not lined up perfectly with that. No, it isn't, it doesn't have to be. But you know what they say, done is better than perfect, right? Also, who wants perfect? Perfect's boring. If I want something done perfectly, I'll just use one of the kilns I already have that can be programmed to do everything perfectly. When I use those, everything comes out really boring. Then I realized most of the people whose work I like have to fight for it. There's a little bit of struggle and chaos because without that little bit, little bit of panic and possibility for complete and utter failure, uh, then, then like success isn't success, it's just what happens. You know, without a little chaos, uh, peacefulness isn't peaceful, it's boring. No one likes boring, I say, as I light a home-built, cobbled together burner. Or not, I left the gas off. That's best for safety, but it's not good for fire. There we go. Let's get the air flowing. Oh, it, it kind of started itself flowing. Nice. This is by far the smallest, quietest burner I've ever built. And the regulator is barely cracked open. Want to see something really cool? I can turn it down to near nothing. I mean, sure, that's a pretty big flame, but like, Look how stable that is. It's staying in the flare. It's not backtracking up this or nothing. My other one has to be at like full blast melting everything in sight mode or it won't work at all. And it's whisper quiet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set a timer and uh, I'm gonna see how long it takes to get that up to red hot. If it gets up to red hot in a reasonable amount of time, uh, we, we will call it a success. It doesn't have to get white hot like all my other stuff. But if, if the regulator is just barely cracked and it gets and it gets glowing, that will be hot enough. Okay, five minutes later, I, I, I also open it up and put something in there. That way, if I, sh if I shoot my thermometer in there, I'm not, I'm getting like the temperature of that thing, not the temperature of that fire, because that seems like that would be cheating. 
Five minutes in, I have it set on the lowest possible setting that I dare. The regulator's barely open, and we got, we got Celsius. What? What crap is this? We got 600 degrees. Okay, that's pretty hot. That's on really low, so don't put in anything in here that's like, that's wet, or it'll just insta-explode. Uh, granted, there's nothing in it, so it's going to heat up a lot quicker with, without any thermal mass in there. When I'm going to use it, I'm probably going to have a bunch of stuff in there. And I'll be opening and closing the lid a lot. But if I wonder what a few minutes on, on, on a little more power is going to do. What, what do you think? All right, a few minutes later and a little bit more juice. That is max 955, so it's 900 degrees. Let's, let's keep, keep going. Oh, fire, how I've missed you. So I got bored. Eventually, uh, it, it stalled. It stopped heating up, and it stalled at about, about an orange hot. My, my little temperature thermometer thing w wouldn't tell me how hot it was. It was too hot. But orange, like, like an orange heat, that's, that's actually probably about perfect for Raku, come to think of it. But uh, I'm, to make it work better, I'm going to need to enlarge in that hole a bit more. Uh, maybe, maybe just give it a chimney. Make it make it a, a proper like chimney with a with a stack to get some draft going. But I yeah I just I plugged the hole, cracked the lid open, cranked the thing up another turn. It's still way below max, and it's I mean it, as you can see the the camera's having a hard time, and uh, I'm I'm getting tired. I think I'm gonna go to bed. I've also noticed I'm, I'm having a lot of problems with the with with wind. I'm doing this in in a garage and obviously got the door wide open which means it's plenty windy kind of chilly too but I'm not so chilly because I'm standing next to this beast so there I think this will work perfectly as is for Raku firing but I've already sat here and thought of like a million different ways to make it hotter obviously make it hot and by a million different ways I mean how am I going to cram a lot more stuff in there and then give it a chimney so it flows a little more air so yeah but there it's done Raku kiln open the lid take thing out when it's not that hot. It's, it's way hotter than it should be for Raku. Dump it into a bucket full of sawdust. If you want to see that, let me know. But the building of the basic thing here is, uh, it's not complete, but the functional aspects are complete. Like, obviously, there's detail work, and I, I never stop tinkering with anything. But, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now and, and perhaps melt some stuff. So, see you next time.